All right, my friends, this video is one that I think you might refer back to in the future. So I'm going to show you a pretty complicated diagram that's going to lay out four different kinds of joins that you need to understand. We've been using a join at this point in time called an inner join. So we're going to understand what an inner join is. We're going to take a look at a quick demonstration. And then we're going to walk through three other kinds of joins, a left outer join, a right outer join, and a full join. For each of these different kinds of joins, I'm going to show you a and a complicated diagram, and we'll do a very quick walkthrough. Attached to this lecture, you are going to see a PDF of this diagram right here. You're going to want to download that PDF probably and hold on to this thing whenever you need to refer back to or remember how a join works in the future. Okay, so let's get to it. We're going to discuss four different kinds of joins and understand the difference between each of them. We're going to first start off with an inner join. Whenever you use the keyword join by itself inside of a query, that is by default an inner join. So it's going to join these two tables together in a very particular way. You can write out either join or alternatively inner join to indicate that you want to do an inner join. So either one, 100% equivalent, either inner join or just join. The way inner join works is it's going to merge these two tables together. Whenever there are values or rows inside these tables that don't match up to a row in the other table, that row is going to be dropped from the overall result set. So let's walk through this scenario right here of how these two tables would be joined together if we were using an inner join. As we just walked through in the last video, and as we've seen several times now, we can imagine that we would take photos and throw them down here. And then we're going to walk through and try to match up all these different rows to some row inside of users. So again, we've got user ID with two right there. So we'd bring that down. User with ID three right there. So we'd bring that down and then user with ID one, and we would bring that down. Now with an inner join, we only keep around rows that match up to a row in the other table. So in this case, four banner JPEG right here with a user ID of null doesn't match up to any row inside of users. So that gets dropped from the overall result set. In addition, you'll notice that inside the users table, there is a user with ID four right here. This user did not have any photos tied to them. So we would also not include that user in the result set in any way. Now to kind of visualize this, you're going to see a diagram that looks very much like this right here in a lot of documentation. The idea behind this little diagram is to say that there is some pool or some table of photos, and there is some table of users, and there's rows in both. Only some of these records match up to records inside the other table. And with an inner join, we are only keeping rows that match up to a row in the other table. So the purple section right here is meant to indicate the set of rows that we actually hold on to for the output of the query. So we only hold on to rows that are kind of matching or present between both photos and users. That is where the term inner join comes from, because we can kind of imagine these two overlapping sets of rows. We are only taking that inner section right there where we have a perfect match between them. Okay, so that's our first kind of join. And again, it is the default join. If you write out just the join keyword, you are doing an inner join. The next kind of join that we're going to take a look at is a left outer join. So with a left outer join, if anything from the photos table does not match up to the users table, we are not going to drop it off. Let's take a look at what this would look like. First off, we would adjust our query a little bit and say left join users. That indicates, indicates that we are doing a left outer join. Then once again, we would take all of our different photos, put them into this imaginary table, and then once again, do that matchup process. So we would pull in two, we would pull in three, and one. And then finally, we don't have any match for this last row down here. But in a left outer join, we do not throw this row away. Instead, if we can't find a match for that, we will instead kind of backfill a row right here, put in some empty values, and they will be given a value of null, like so. So with a left outer join, we do not throw away rows from the source table that ma don't match up to something on the join table, which in this case is users. And again, we want to kind of picture this as something like this. We're taking everything out of the photos table, Hopefully we can match some stuff up with users, but if we don't, that's fine. We're still gonna keep the unmatched photos as well. 
Okay, let's take a look at right outer join. So with right outer join, we essentially have the exact opposite of a left outer join. In this case, we're going to take all of our different users and include them, even if they don't match up to something from photos. And of course, we're still going to keep all the records that match up as well. To do a route at right outer join, we type out right join, like you see right there. Now in this scenario, we are still going to take our source table, which is still photos, because that is what we are specifying right here in the from statement. And then we're going to once again go through that matching process. So we get the two, we get the three, and the one. And now here's the interesting part. Any unmatched rows from the left-hand side are going to be dumped. So with the right outer join, we dump any rows on the left-hand side, so from photos that don't match up, but then we include any rows from users. So we're going to include user four right here, even though they didn't have any photos. The actual column values for this will be set to null for the relevant post. So there is no relevant post, so we'd put in null, null, and null, like so. So that's a right join, or right outer join. And then finally, the last one we're going to take a look at is a full join. In a full join, we say, just give us everything. We don't care whether or not there is any correct merging going on. Just try to merge as many rows as possible. And if we can't, just include all the others. So in this case, we'd once again take all of our different photos, put them down here. We would do our best to match everything up. So we would take user two, user three, Come on, you. There we go. And user one. And now we still have the photo right here with ID four. There's nothing that matches up in the user's table, but rather than throw it away, we are going to keep it around. And we're going to set all the relevant columns for some kind of related user to null. And then in addition, we're also going to include this user over here, even though there is no matching photo for them. So we would include this user. And we would give them some values also set to null, like so. Oops, my mistake. Back over here. There we go. We would also set them to null, like so. All right, and I'm going to change the color on this to white, just to make sure it's really clear. There we go. OK, so that's it. That is the inner join, a left outer join, a right outer join, and finally a full join. Now, I gotta tell you right now, this is just your first introduction to this, and it is a very complicated topic. So if you're seeing this and you're saying, what's the difference between these, and when would we use any of them, more importantly, this is all stuff that you will learn in due time. As a really quick example, I would tell you right now, why would we use any of these particular joins? Well, to solve the query that we were just discussing a moment ago. Remember, we were just talking about run wanting to run a query that's gonna show every single photo even if a photo does not have a related user. So in this scenario, our left table or kind of our source table is photos. So if we did a left outer join, that would give us all photos. And it would try to match them up with users if we could. But if there was not a matching user, we would still include the underlying photo. And so this would solve the query that we were just trying to work on unsuccessfully. So all we would have to do is a left join, and we should see that photo appear even though it doesn't have a related user. So there are definitely scenarios where you are probably going to want to use each of these different kinds of joins, and it really just comes down to the kind of question or the kind of query that you are trying to solve. All right, so let's take a pause right here. We're going to come back in the next video. I'm going to show you a quick demonstration where we do a left join to solve the query that we were just talking about. And then we'll go through, we'll go through a quick quiz or two to better understand what these joins are doing.